worship you, Jesus. We break the strongholds, God. We release your glory. We release your praise. We release your presence in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Let it rain, let it rain. Open the floodgates. Come on and tell them. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Yes. Let it rain. Come on and tell them. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let blood where would I be if it wasn't for the blood where would I be if it wasn't for the blood of the lamb if it wasn't for his mercy where would I be where would I be where would I be where would I be come on where are the worshipers where are the worshipers in the house disgusted and all kinds of things and all kinds of trouble and all kinds of situation and then all of a sudden when Jesus washed when Jesus washed how many were know that you were dirty down and out and just just all my sin He gave you an embrace. 
place. Oh, I don't know about you, but if it wasn't for the Lamb of God, where would I be? If it wasn't for the blood of the Lord, where would I be? If it wasn't for the touch of Jesus, where would I be? I know it was. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. All right. All right. Give God the highest. You know what? On a count of three. Get ready to release it in the atmosphere. Are you ready? Are you ready? I want you to look at your neighbor. And I want you to tell him this. Come on. You look at your neighbor. I'm going to look at my neighbor. And I want you to tell him this. I want you to say, neighbor, I've been through some stuff. I've gone through some trials. There were some times that I never thought I would make it out. But God, but God, but God. And for a moment, I did not think he was on time. I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to lose it all. I thought I would never get back up. But God, but God, but God, but God, but God. And if he did it then, he's going to do it today. And if he did it then, he's going to do it today. But God, but God, but God, but God. Here 
Hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name. Woo. I wish somebody listen. That's it, that's it. You don't even need to stay in your seat. I don't care what you do. How many know you just need? You're stuck between the seed and the harvest. Anybody stuck between the seed and the harvest? Anybody in the waiting period of your life? Anybody waiting? Anybody waiting on a miracle? Anybody waiting on a breakthrough? Anybody? Come on. Lift up your hands if you're waiting on a miracle. Lift up your hands. Lift them up. Lift them up. Say, I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I'm believing God today. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. Between a seed and a harvest, I'm gonna praise my breakthrough. I'm gonna praise my way through. My God, stuck between a seed and a harvest, I'm gonna praise my way through. I'm gonna praise my way through. I'm gonna praise. Listen, listen. I know what God's doing here, but I gotta, I gotta give this to you. Y'all can do whatever you want. It ain't church as usual. Sometimes you just gotta let the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you just gotta let the Spirit of God. Sometimes you wanna be so proper. You just gotta let God. You gotta let church. You get, I know a lot of I, I know I know, but we have we have gone backwards instead of forward. We 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 just wanna put a pretty thing together and flow like we wrote it on paper but sometimes God just want to do what God wants to do and God wants to move in his house and God wants to manifest his glory and God wants to glorify himself and God wants to open up doors for your life and God wants to heal you and God wants to restore you and God wants to empower your life Put your hands together for the Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord in the house. Talking to people about miracles, but I have yet to see 
a miracle. Talking to people about healing, but every time I go to the doctor, I get the same report. Talking to the people about provision, but my bank account is on zero. Talking to people about joy, but I find myself crying every night. Talking to people about hope, but yes, sometimes I lose my bearings and I feel hopeless and helplessness consumes me. What do I do in between the seed and the harvest? The Lord says, accept my timing because I'm always on time. Something is about to come forth out of the soil. God, God has given you hopes and dreams. Many of you are carrying dreams in your belly. There are pregnant people in the house. <laughs> they are pregnant with dreams and hopes. You are reminded every night because you feel your dream move in your belly and you are reminded that you are carrying something greater than you. But sometimes he doesn't allow you to access the timing of when that dream is going to birth forth. And sometimes you're frustrated, not knowing sometimes. There are times when you want to give up. Anybody have ever want to give up? You don't know how long it's going to take. Everybody's getting ahead of you. People that are not even faithful to God are getting ahead of you. People that are not even as hungry for God. And doesn't that get you mad sometimes when people that are just not seeking God, they haven't sown anything, but yet they're reaping something that you should have reaped a long time ago. The devil is a liar. Your timing is coming. God's about to show up. There's something that the people of God got to learn. You got to learn. You got to learn to live in hope in a hopeless world. You got to learn to live joyful while waiting on God. You got to trust God for your life and put yourself in the hands of God. My God, you, you, you see, Joseph was falsely accused and he was in prison. But God had already given him a dream. But he had to endure ridicule, persecution. Betrayal, but they couldn't take away the dream. They put him in a pit, they couldn't take. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Y'all didn't hear me. He went through hell, but they couldn't take away the dream. You ain't hearing me. There was jealousy, but they couldn't touch the dream because the dream that God puts up, no man can touch it. I don't care what you've been through, I don't care if you've dragged yourself to dirt. The Lord put a dream, and it's about to come forth.
When God didn't tell you, see, God gives you the dream, but he doesn't tell you, waste your time waiting. And there are people wasting your time waiting. You're sitting waiting. You're not doing nothing waiting for the door to open. You're not doing anything waiting for somebody to see you. You're not doing anything waiting for a special touch. I got news for you. God already touched you. God already gave you the dream. God already sowed the seed. God already declared the word. You might as well rejoice. You might as well lift your hands up and give God all glory and praise. This is easy. What's God's training? What, what does it mean for God to mobilize us? Simply this. He tells us to do. When he tells us to do it, we must do it without questioning it or trying to figure everything out. Tell your neighbor, I don't got to figure it all out. The word of the Lord says, a man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his path. Come on. Y'all need to sit for a minute, because I got to break this. Come on. We got, we, got, we got 10 minutes of this. Come on. Come on. I dare you to worship. Yeah. Y'all ladies, stay close by. I feel the presence of God. life that you live in Christ. I 
ain't hearing me, baby. Listen, I have to let you go because you talk a little too much. And I, I, I'm sorry, I, I can't be walked unless you change your ways. I cannot walk with you anymore because I sown a seed and I'm on my way to the harvest. I'm not just anybody. I am a woman of God ready for destiny to reign and prosper. I'm going to live this life. I'm going to live this life as the Lord has allowed me to live this life. I apologize. I'm trying to hold on to some relationships that are no good for you. You're stuck. And there are people that have lost their way while waiting for the harvest. You've lost your communication line. And you're making an excuse. You shown got prospered. And you use your prosperity to make up an excuse not to walk in relationship with God and in fellowship with your brother and not to come to the house of God because you're too busy. You better be careful because just because you have a blessing right here doesn't mean that the harvest will come into fruition. See, some of you, uh, I see, oh, I wish I, I, wish I could get it in your head that 
that you need to begin to declare a word over your life every day. You need to speak. I told you not too long ago. I told you not. You need to take those thoughts and you need to take those things and you need to give it a name and you need to look illness. I'm looking at you right now. Now I want to tell you something. If we're going to live together, I'm in charge of you and you're not in charge of me. I tell you what's going to happen in my life and in my mind and in my heart. Uh, some of us are living with a little bit of guilt. We still can't get over that guilt. It's all right. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to look at guilt and bring it to life and sit it right next to you. In another word, take it out of yourself and begin. Get out 
there. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. You already see the harvest. Look at blessings. Are you? Look at doors that are opening. You don't need to work no more. You're already in the harvest season. What? I'm in the harvest season? How, how do I know? I, I already made it to the harvest. So has it been raining in your house? No. Any trials? No. Any water hit the soil? No. Any wind blown some things out of your home? No. Any confrontation with yourself? No. Woke up in the middle of the night wanting to pray? No. Girl, you ain't, you ain't seen nothing yet to go. Somebody say, let it go. This one is mm. the past. Oh, yeah, the past is good. You're waiting for what? You're waiting for. You've been through so much stuff. I don't care what you saw, you are never going to reap what God had orchestrated for you to reap because you messed up so bad that you will never. The devil is a liar. He that the Lord set free is free indeed. I need to talk to somebody who's messed up, who's bummed up. Is there anybody who's messed up bad? Come on, are you in the house? Is there anybody who sometimes didn't get it right? Uh, is there anybody that at a moment forgot? I got news for you. God is getting ready to show up because one day long ago you sown a seed and God has not forgotten your seed. God.
sing God? You want me to preach God? You want me to evangelize God? You want me to declare healing over somebody else's kid where my kid can't get the healing that my child needs God? What are you doing, God? And all of a sudden, God breaks out and he says one word, yes, 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 yes. yes.
so that we can really see with clarity the God that we truly serve. I Your soul is your mind. This is where your will and your emotions are. When the word gets into your soul and away from your self-will, you begin to understand the will of God for your life. Living out of one's own soul is equivalent to staying in the wilderness. Living out of your own emotions will keep you in the wilderness. Living out of your own mindset will keep you wondering. Wondering and wondering. W-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G and W-O-N-D-E-R-I-N-G. Wondering in circles, wondering where God is. But when your flesh is crucified, are you hearing me? Say amen. And I get out of my soul and I walk into the will of God, that is when I enter into the promised land. The promised land is the season in my life where I walk in fellowship with God. And you were hearing me. I'm breaking this down for you clearly. The promised land is enjoying his presence in the middle of a trial. In another word, hell is breaking loose in my house, but I have peace. understand it. I don't understand myself, but I have peace. Is there anybody in that season right now? I'm not getting everything right, but I have peace. I have joy. I'm laughing. And I am watch, watch. Between sea time and harvest time is called the waiting time. When the seed goes in, the heat, the moisture, the pressure of the ground causes the outer hall of the soil to crack open. Rooted you and you trying to go to the left but you can't because 
because the root has already been it's strengthening it's strengthening it and you don't even understand it as a matter of fact right now right here right now there are some people feeling the pressure you feel the rooting you're like i've been trying to get out of this place and it seems that i can't now you ain't hearing me some of you been trying to get out of birthday worship center and you can't god keeps you here you don't know why you don't know how you don't know when
I don't know what happened. I was driving in my truck, and all of a sudden, I felt something come into my life. I had to stop the truck. I had to pull over. I had to get on my knees, and I had to say, God, I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back to you. And the mama, oh my God, you don't understand. Uh, for a while, she didn't see it. But God, but somebody say, but. You see, when harvest comes, you see your dreams come to pass. Your kids begin to change. Prosperity, favor, promotion, doors opening. You see, in my life, I've been waiting around for a word that was given to me years ago. A word that I took very lightly. As a matter of fact, I dare say half of the time, it became so continuous every time an evangelist or a preacher that didn't know me came, every time that word came forth, I kind of said, here we go again with the same word, and I have yet to see it. You know, some of you are like, oh, yeah, I know. Some of you don't even want somebody to say a word. I was there. And let me tell you, I can remember that as in 20 years. I think it was the first time I heard that word. I heard that word. You're not going to I can't give you all the details, but let me explain something to you. Last year, the Lord began to deal in my life. You see, I've been sowing. Pastor Charles and I have been standing right here, have been walking in. We've been stuck for a long Long time. We've been saying, Lord, when are we going to finish the house? Lord, when are you going to do this? Lord, when are you going to do that? Lord, when is that promise coming? Lord, and Lord, 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 Lord. And I got news for you. Last year, the Lord began to deal with me and began to crack me. Now, I thought I had already been cracked. And all of a sudden, I get a message. A humongous door opens. <laughs> I said, me? Yes, you. He says, go. I want you to do this. I said, okay. Now, a door opened from a very well-established place that all of you are very familiar with. With preachers that all of you are very familiar with. And I, in fear, because I'm crazy, but I still do it. I may doubt it, but I still do it. And I said, okay, I'm gonna do it. I started writing a proposal, went through, it went through. They said, okay, but then I don't hear anything else. And then I started doubting. And I, one day I said, I said, Lord, I know you didn't put a lollipop in my face to take it away. But I said this, but I said, Lord, you know when I'm ready. You know when I'm ready. Right, right when I lose all expectations. You know, when you kind of settle for, oh well. Anybody been there? Oh well. It is what it is. Another phone call. Hey. And then I get the call. The reason is because this may be a little bigger than what you may think. And we gotta know how to handle this. Yeah. I'm still in the waiting and the process so much that the last conversation, I sat there and said absolutely nothing. And I'm thinking these people must think she's so shy. She may not do good in media. The truth was that 
that the Lord has put in me. Don't say much. Don't try so hard. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do. No matter what you do. This is a, a year for me that's come with a lot of changes. And church, you better get ready for what's about to hit this house. Because this church is about to go public real soon and you don't even know it. What I'm trying to say to you is this. When you sow, you shall reap. But while you're here, keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on praising. Don't get stuck here. Rise up. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Stand up on your feet right now. Stand up on your feet. Come on, rise up. Anybody waiting for the harvest? Anybody waiting? God's timing is a mystery. Don't try to figure it out. As a matter of fact, drop that right now. He is not late. Tell your neighbor, he is not late. Y'all stay right there. I don't know what the Holy Ghost wants to do with y'all. He is not late. Now, it may happen slowly, steadily, but surely the time is approaching. When the vision will be fulfilled over your life and your home and your children. I wish somebody got that word. Your job is not to figure out when, but to make up your mind that you won't give up. And in the meantime, you're going to lift your hands. You're going to rejoice. You're going to give God glory. You're going to worship. Trusting God will bring life to your home. Some of you need to bring some life back to your home. Some of you cannot save your neighbor because they haven't seen life and trust in you. It's time to bring it to pass. Timing and trust work side by side. I trust God for the right timing in the right season of my life and in the meantime I'm going to lift my hands and I'm going to worship are you ready lift up your hands lift up your hands come on lift them up those of you that are waiting lift them up high lift them up high stuck in between the sea and the harvest. You're kind of waiting on God. You're waiting for God to come through, but you can't see it, but you, you got to walk out of here trusting God today. Come on, you're here with me. I know this message was a little longer today, but I had to break it down. Did y'all receive the word?
This is what I want us to do. I want you to trust God. He is not late. Whatever you are going through, whatever you've been through, whatever your fears, whatever your unanswered prayers, I speak to your life and your soul and your emotions to line up with the word that has been declared and the promises that God established over your life. Trust God, even if it don't make sense right now. Trust God that the reason he brought you here today was for you to hear, trust me. Trust me. Trust me with your life. Trust me with your destiny. Trust me with your children. Trust me. <laughs> if you're going through some illness right now, and a report has been declared over your life. I say to you right now, trust the report of the Lord over your life. If a door closed on you and people walked away and your best friend betrayed you, trust Trust God. If you're down and out, hopeless and helpless, waiting, trust God. We'll give that all right there quick. Gotta be led, gotta be led. The same church as usual today. Jason, come here. I need for you to be a point of contact. Spirit of the living God, right now, I pray that as you sit there in Philadelphia, Right there where our angels are encamping over Jaden's bed. Over Darlene. I declare right now healing over that body. Right now I declare this word. Take a hold of the insides of Jaden's body. The blood that was shed to heal right now, let it flow. Let it flow. Saturate the room with peace, hope, power, strength, provision. In Jesus' name, no weapon formed against this family shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Healing over 
Jaden with the clearer right now. Strength over Darlene with the clearer right now. In the name of Jesus, right now, Lord. Right now, we declare it, oh Lord. Right now, Father. Somebody say healing. Somebody shout healing. Healing, healing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I, I, see, this family has been waiting. This family has been waiting on the stuck in between the seed and the harvest for a long time. And they love the Lord. And they're very reserved individuals. But I gotta do what I gotta do. If you're waiting today and you're looking for acceleration in your life, if you are waiting on God, see this family has been through some stuff. Their son, how long have you been in the, been in the hospital now? Almost four weeks. One person working, car breaks down. Baby has a biopsy. The pain is so excruciating, they have him on morphine. They can't figure it out. Mom's tired but waiting on the Lord. Dad's tired, but waiting on the Lord. Car breaks down to top it all up. Everything begins to press in. Anybody been there? Yeah, just when you think it got bad, it gets worse. Anybody been there? I know there's visitors here. But I need to do something right now. Y'all know what I'm going to do, right? I need him to go to Philly today. And I want him to take with him a seed of trust. Y'all didn't hear me. But wait, before you do anything, listen. You're going to show for where you're at. And you're going to accelerate them from where they're at. Did you hear me? Bring it on right away. Right away. So let's see. This is going directly to them. Directly. Come on. I need some men to cover him in prayer.
Church, lift up your hands to the Lord and minister to you. We'll get ready. Come on, right there with me. Lift them up high. Say, Lord, I receive your word. Shout it, I receive your word. Today, forgive me if I have doubted while waiting. I trust you. I trust the process. I trust that I'm in your hands. Today, I leave here knowing that you are in control of my destiny, of my life, of my children, of the promises. While I wait, I will declare that you are my God. Today, I leave with hope and sound mind in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to find somebody and tell them, trust the process. Trust the process. Trust the process. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands.